Good morning, folks. I would like to start featuring another of our conference speakers, Dr. Kongpop Uyen. Those who listen to our Saturday audio uploads at the website have heard this name plenty the last few weeks as he was set to talk on space weather induced disasters on Earth. For some more background on Dr. Uyen, please check NASA's Goddard Library repository for his many publications. It has been a key part of those audio discussions recently that there seems to be earthquake seasons for parts of the planet where they're more likely to occur, just like tropical systems, and that each seem to at least loosely go together. While I was wrong in the notion that one caused the other, Dr. Uyen was extremely convincing on the point that both events are driven by space weather, and they're a little bit more than loosely tied together. He's forever changed the way I will do the news. That'll start soon, as soon as I kink out the works. Wait, scratch that, reverse it. There you go. With no permission or consult from Dr. Uyen, I will be incorporating his teachings into predictive elements of both earthquakes and tropical storm cells, and call it the Uyen system. To be clear, all future successes using the system are to be credited to Dr. Uyen exclusively, and all incorrect predictions or other failures resulting from my use of his teachings should be placed squarely on my shoulders. Dr. Uyen has not consented or consulted yet. But he did mention my name during his speech in a frank nod to our corona whole quake correlations. Oh, and he also might have proven that tornadoes are electric, but that's another story. Coming to the alert map, landslide, took out multiple homes, injured a few and claimed at least three lives. Boy in event mode off the 6.2 earthquake they had there yesterday, no major deviation at all. Same goes here, except that this area, for those who are new here, is vastly important, and the short lesson on that one is titled Disturbance Under the Ocean. Can't miss it. It is paramount, however, to note that today's deviation there is likely nothing more than the effect of the tropical remnant sitting right on top of it now. A bit east, we see a disjointed convergence that looks to want to crest the South Island while keeping his left foot on Sydney, Australia. Clearly, we'll monitor that big storm system heading at Europe, but right now I the temperature delta between east and west, all on the surface drive due to pressure. Similarly, we'll watch that beast out in the Pacific, but the convergence at the southeast today might not be readily apparent there, only slightly. There will be a few storms there this evening. Solar wind. We saw the speed in yellow plateau and stabilize under 500 kilometers per second. The density is falling in kind. Geomagnetics are calm, but a bit potentialized, if I may. Solar flaring can't muster the big ones, except this time it is certainly not for a lack of sunspot complexity. Sticking south once again out of necessity, the lead longitudinal bipolarity is now a lone delta spot. Interesting, the central grouping is the big story. A lateral complexity has the sides lining up its scrimmage, ready to rock. That's at least one delta. Meanwhile, the trailer is getting a bit of the negative we asked for, it's just to the tail. I do advise also monitoring the incoming northern group as it becomes earth-facing. It's quite clear that a negative coronal hole is on the disk down south. Not terribly apparent how far north it extends on the SDO shots, though. It's probably because the southern bit is as strong as coronal holes get, and the northern extension is of moderate power only. We had a couple pops on our star the last day, none are of any concern, but we will show one that will likely be geo-effective in the slightest of manners. 7.30 a.m. in the east, 5.30 a.m. here at the conference. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.